Um, so, I don't know if you guys could hear me conversating with that cop, but I was just trying to plant some seeds and drop some knowledge to him at least a little bit, you know. Hey, what's up, guys? So, we are somewhere outside of Chicago, Gurney or something like that. Gurney County Police or something, Sheriff's. And as you've been seeing, we've been harassed for the last, I don't know, almost a Which key does that? Being harassed by these guys, you know, they're being nice enough as individuals, but at the end of the day, like the first talk, when I said, Why are you asking me to get out of the car? He was like, Mr. Bro, you know, started getting all mean and said, we can do this the easy way or the hard way kind of thing. Like, so they, they don't really care about what we feel. They don't care that they're inconveniencing us. They don't care that, you know, we're feeling violated to them. It's like, well, we're following the law, right? And these gentlemen have been nice enough to explain to me, well, there's a big heroin fentanyl epidemic around here. That has nothing to do with us. And uh, the dog didn't alert to anything outside. So now they decided, or he supposedly alerted to the side where he scratched. And so that gave him reason to go in the car. And they said they were just gonna, you know, see if the dog alerted anything else. Of course, they just, like I told them, I said, obviously bringing the dog out logically leads to going in the car because that's what you guys are gonna do. So let's just get it over with. So they're being nice enough, trying to be human beings, but that doesn't stop their job from being a part of the system. So here they are, just digging through our stuff, looking to find some reason to throw one of us in a cage, as we're trying to get to Chicago to volunteer and host a meditation and you know, spread awareness about this kind of stuff. But uh, these cops don't really seem too willing to listen. They're nice enough, but at the end of the day, they're still the people who are oppressing us at the moment and slowing us down and standing in the way of us moving and traveling. So, yeah. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, we can all get out of here without being harassed for anything. But for right now, they're just digging through all of our personal belongings. So that's enough of violation, I would say. I know concerning to us here is you've got this cabinet up top here and there's um, yeah cabinet up top here and on one side it's solid and on the other side the piece looks like it's moved forward and there's like a two inch point there so we're going to check that as long as there's not a motor we should be in the shoes that get you guys here yeah i told him that the dogs are trained to false signal and that the dogs alert wrong often the cops said oh really i said yeah you need to look it up but he said oh i'm not a cop dog the cop dog is in there he's the tough guy i'll say so hey danny i see that you're listening brother if you can help me out or if anybody on here is friends with christy day g christy with a c day g g e e she's our host for today in chicago can you please tag her or send this video to her let her know we're running late because of this bs so um i don't have my phone it's in there and we're all using our phones to stream so if anybody can tag her in this stream or share it with her that'd be very helpful or if you danny if you want to go to the liberate your mind chicago event post this feed in there so people can see what's happening thank you guys Lynette, can I address your comment? You said to get that vehicle inspected. You sound like you're a, a, a mom, like, kind of scolding her children. We're not children, we're adults, and we made a conscious decision to not get to this register. We really tried to. I just bought this vehicle before this tour. We have insurance on it. All these kind of things that I don't personally want to deal with because I hate dealing with the state, but uh, we just didn't have time before we left Houston, but we still had a tour to do. We figured, you know what, it's worth getting on the road and trying to do the tour. We've been on the road for 10, 11 days now without being harassed once by a cop. This is the first time since Houston all the way to Chicago that we've been harassed by cops. So I think we're doing pretty good. But when we get home, as long as we're on the road, we will be playing the state's game so that we don't have to deal with these kind of issues. But still, I think it's bullshit and you sh people should think about it deeper. Why do we have to go through such, just such strife just to drive, to travel as free people across the world and across the state? I think it's silly. Um, and. These people just obviously use this as an excuse to get in the car, you know, like he saw the license plate, it's just not good. Here your driver's like, or uh, your keys back. Um, he's just putting that plate back in there. What that was back there was an electric. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, everything else in there looks no issues at all, except for the driver's license and the license plate and that. I guess the police are, I guess they all can understand where we're coming from, how 
you know, the, the spidey sense is kind of hit. And I don't know if you've ever had to see somebody, you know, somebody pass them. Any, any kind of drug use or anything like that. So we unfortunately had to see that as well, so you can kind of understand where we're coming at trying to keep that stuff out of our neighborhoods here. So. I don't want to come off. No, I want to talk to you. I can see your perspective. You have the law to listen to. That's the only topic I want to talk to you about. The law is the law of the land, right? So I understand, like, okay, people are coming multiple places. But then from another perspective, outside of your family, all those things that you have to do, and 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 you have to personal decisions for me. I know you're just doing your job or not, but like, I just want to plant that seed. I think, I think a lot of people look at it that way too, but a lot of times people don't understand is we're facilitators for the judicial system. I mean, if you break it down, we're paid for what you're supposed to write tickets and we send to the court. Like, as an individual to say, like, you know what, I think this is a moral, I don't want to participate. You know? And I personally, as a journalist, I've met people who used to work in the defense industry who were comfortable, even though the person inside, they felt like their soul was dying. Oh, well, as, as far as... they left because they felt like what they were doing was immoral. As far as immoral goes, we've, been, not be here we've been pretty cool with you guys, right? Yeah, no, I'm Everyone's saying, I'm treated saying, pretty well, okay, so that's, it's I don't, I don't mean this for this What I mean is, right. in my view, what you guys represent in that suit and, and as a police force, obviously I think we could have community defense, but in the day and age now, like, police are being heavily militarized. You know, there's all sorts of, there's not a shortage of uh, small police departments, maybe you guys have drones. Well, like, I'll, I'll tell you what, though, we could, probably, we, could probably do, we could probably sit here and talk for yeah. hours, but I don't want to keep you guys any I longer than we have to, and I you probably don't want to have to stay here. Scenes, man, because I, I think that you guys are probably good human beings, but... A lot of what it's like if I work for the, the slave master, even if I'm not the one whipping the slaves, I'm still participating. Right. Well, I mean, you break it down to the license plate issue, you say that, you know, that's a revenue generator. Well, at the same time, if somebody's committing a, uh, a crime, whether that be a property crime or whether it be a crime against another person, and they're operating a vehicle, they don't have valid registration, it's registered to somebody else or something like that, that hinders our investigation, our ability to get justice for that. So, no, I got that. In a way, I'm you're, you're, you're looking at it on a different level. I just feel like it went from like the license to like, you need to be you guys can just go and see what the dog triggered to the end. Because of that. Regardless of whether the dog triggered, we wouldn't know. If the dog triggered right there, right? Like the whole thing. I'm just saying that. Right. And it, like I said earlier, like when you say, well, we're going to bring the dog to sleep outside, it's a logical thing that the next thing you're going to do is go inside. There's a lot of times with the dog. And there's nothing like this is what I say. There's nothing I can do inside. If I lose, you guys might shoot me. You might tase me. You might grab me. That's, well, that's a little overboard. I'm surrounded by four people with guns right now. Right. Too. And we're, we're letting you guys walk around. Too, I know, so I think, but you understand that like, yeah. you have the upper hand. I, th I, think, I think you realize the difference between what you might see on YouTube or read on Facebook and what you're seeing right in front of you talking to me. I'm not saying you have it. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, right now. Right. Outside of just this, I don't want to let you guys go where the dog trigger is. Most of us well, we so like the well, you met some gurney police today, and we do things the right way. So. Doing things nice so, right, nice to meet you. You guys are uh, set to get back in the car. I'm going to get you your paperwork, and we'll get you on your way. So, good. Can you grab our stuff? Right yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and grab what you need. Do you want to say anything else? Um, so, I don't know if you guys could hear me conversating with that cop, but I was just trying to plant some seeds and drop some knowledge to him at least a little bit, you know. They try, as always, they want to say, like, well, we've been really nice with you today. We have this, but as a cop, I was, like, I was trying to get him to understand, like, on a deeper philosophical level, they have the upper hand. Any wrong move we make, they got four guns, they got tasers. They could paint us, you know, say, I moved too quick, so they had to shoot me. 
and cops get away with that shit all the time. So yeah. he can sit there and be like, well, I was nice to you. And, and again, I see him as a human being. He's treating me nice. But at the end of the day, their job reinforces this whole fucking system that a lot of you guys are trying to fight against. So it's not saying fuck all cops or whatever. I've had family members who were cops who thought they were doing good, but they left because they realized how fucking corrupt it is. So at the end of the day, like I was telling him, you have a choice, right? You don't have, he's like, well, the law, you know, we're just paper pushers. That's an easy cop out. You know, you have a choice. You can say, you know what? I'm not going to arrest this fucking cannabis, whatever. You know, it's just, it's BS. We're good though. We're going to continue on the road. If you're in Chicago, come see us. Peace.